Well, joining me inside the wind tunnel, a longtime friend, the undisputed voice of NASCAR on Fox, Mike Joy. Mike, first of all, I am so pleased that you've decided to join me here in the wind tunnel. But let's circle back to Martinsville, Virginia, where both you and I spent many a weekend at the Dutch Inn and at the place that Clay Earls built. Have you ever in your entire career witnessed anything to rival what we saw uh, Ross Chastain do on that last lap over the weekend? Has anyone? I no. don't <laughs> think so. You know, uh, the closest finish I can remember to that actually came right at Martinsville, and it was Jeff Bodine and Richie Evans, which up until Sunday was that Speedway's most famous ever foot it, uh, finish, and photos of it hung in Clay Earl's office, you know, as long as, uh, as, long as he ran the Speedway. Uh, Jeff was inside Richie coming off the final corner. They had bumped in turn three, and they both refused to lose and kept their foot in it. Um, Bodine went spinning toward the inside wall after they got together, and Richie climbed, actually climbed the wall with the right side of his car and came across the start-finish line on two wheels as the winner of the race uh, because they both refused to lose. So uh, I think that's the closest we've ever come at Martinsville or anywhere else uh, to a finish like this one. Well, what's the old line? I can't believe what I just saw. But now let's shift our attention to what lies ahead this weekend, and that is the championship weekend at Phoenix. And I talked to Phil Parsons a little bit about what lies ahead for the trucks, but let's start in the Xfinity series. Um, I don't need you to handicap the field, but in your opinion, is this Xfinity title Noah Gregson's to lose? Uh, it may be. Yeah. Uh, you know, certainly he has has the experience to get this done. Uh, he knows where he's going to be next year, and it's not back in the Xfinity series. He's uh, being promoted to Cup, and so. I think there's probably less pressure on him than there is on the other three drivers. So sure. Uh, you know, why not? It's his to lose. Now uh, at the other end of the scale, Ty Gibbs apparently doesn't know what pressure is. And, I guess. Uh, you know, he's, he's got a career ahead of him. He's going to, you know, whether he will be in the Xfinity series next year remains to be seen. Um, since there is a seat open in the Cup Series at Joe Gibbs Racing, and it seems to be a seat that requires a very polarizing driver, and uh, they, they could probably measure him for it right now. But they have said at Joe Gibbs Racing, their desire, after having seen what happened with uh, Gibbs drivers like Joey Logano, who was elevated because a seat opened up and they needed to fill it, and probably came up too soon. They don't want to repeat that with Ty yeah. Gibbs. On the other hand, who are you going to call? So uh, he also may have no pressure uh, going into this final round. Uh, it'll be interesting. You know, during the week after that uh, bump and run on his teammate for the win, uh, Ty's me. dad. Excuse me. You mean that dump and run? Dump and run. Much better. Let's get, let's get, call it what it is. Uh, his dad, Coy Gibbs, said that's not the way he wants to see us see Joe Gibbs racing win races. And, and I, it reminded me of my dad scolding me and you because there was a point to be made. And I, I think that I think what's going to be interesting this weekend is does Ty just slough it off the way he did when he celebrated the victory at Martinsville or when dad takes you behind the barn and gives you a what's for, does that make you a little more cautious and ergo maybe not as competitive as you might have been if it hadn't happened. Well, he's got one job on Saturday, as all four of those drivers do, win the race. Mm -hmm. And NASCAR has shown by their um, unwillingness to make a call that on the last lap, it's pretty much boys have at it. Um, I'm not buying the idea of, you know, what, what was it Dale said when he turned Terry Labonte at Bristol? I just I wanted to, to rattle his cage. I just right. wanted to rattle his cage. Thank That's goodness right. Ty didn't say that. But I'm not buying it, you yeah. know, because he hit Brandon Jones. Uh, no, he hit, excuse me. 
he hit that car hard enough to wrinkle the hood on his car on his own car yeah yeah, yeah. so that was not a bump you know that that was that was just not a not a bump and run in my eyes so he's going to have a target on his back uh at phoenix and on both sides and on the front of his car uh, so all he can do is go out there and and give it 100% and try to win the race i had thought um before i saw the excessive celebration I had thought that he might come to victory lane and say, geez, I'm really sorry that happened. I really, I really didn't mean to dump him, but look what happened to Cole Custer for giving a, a teammate a break and his job is to win the race. And he did just that, but you know, it's a team sport until the white flag waves, I guess. Then you have no friends. What was the old line? I'd park my mother. <laughs> if it meant that I could win Tony I Stewart, let... I, Tony Stewart, I'd wreck my grandmother. <laughs> grandmother to win a championship. That's right. Yeah. Let grandmothers me... everywhere. We're scared. Uh, let me ask you this. Uh, the next gen car, certainly the great topic of conversation, you know, all year long, we just alluded to some of the issues that are at, in play and at hand there this year's playoffs seem as exciting as they have been seem every round to be overshadowed by controversy and not controversy about the playoffs, but blocking or spinning somebody out in the caution or, you know, issues uh, getting through tech. And do you think that the playoffs have gotten Mike, the, the type of positive attention that NASCAR had hoped, or is it, is it every Monday morning, they just go to the office and go, <laughs> Oh God, what do we have to deal with now? Because since the, since the round of 16, it seems every Monday, we don't talk about the winner. We talk about something, you know, associated with the playoffs. But Jack, that's every Monday. That's yes. every Monday ever <laughs> since your dad bought Stafford Speedway in the 1960s. Okay. There's always an undercurrent of the sport that goes, I'm not happy till you're not happy. And there's always something to, to be complained about, whether it's, you know, the width of the tire, whether it's, you know, the tech guy doesn't like me, whether, you know, the race director is mean, there's always something. And usually what's missing is taking on responsibility. Yeah. Uh, everybody's got a beef and everybody, believe me, everybody's got suggestions on how the sport could be better. If only they would do this or that. So this is nothing new. This has been going on longer than you and I have been in the sport. Uh, but certainly it's magnified in the playoffs. Maybe we're too close to it. Maybe we need to just sit back, as I've seen a number of people do today, uh, sitting in restaurants for lunch or whatever, and just listening to everybody talking about Ross Chastain's move, and especially people who don't fo follow racing, but they see that and they go, am I being punked? Is, is, is this a bad edit? Is, was, was this a poorly conceived movie shot? Was this real? Sure was. Uh, <laughs> enjoy it. it all right, so, it only, but enjoy it. All right. So now let's, let's end our conversation where it should be. And that's at the cup level. We're, we're not going to have a, a defending champion racing, but rather four cats that seem as if they're willing to do whatever it takes going into Phoenix. Do you think anybody has big Mo on their side compared to the other three? Um, Christopher Bell. You know, the guy said he's had two, two walk-offs. Walk wins, two yeah. walk-offs, you know, two must-win situations where he won. So, yes, Christopher Bell. Uh, Ross Chastain has the whole, the whole court of public opinion on his side for what he's done. And, and, and he's already won in my book by getting Trackhouse to the championship round. That's a win for that new and small uh, organization. Uh, you know, that's an absolute win just being there. You know, it's kind of like getting nominated for an Academy Award. Uh, you know, you're excited because your name's on the list. Whether you win <laughs> or not, well, okay. You know, that uh, that's fine. Uh, I wonder about Chase Elliott because in, in his post-race interview on Sunday, he just didn't seem excited, you know, about – the possibility of face uh, of what, what was ahead at Phoenix, you know, yeah, we'll be prepared. We'll be ready. We'll do what we do, you know, and Joey Logano's always got a smile on his face. You know, he's, he's the happiest guy in the sport. 
Um, you know, so uh, don't ask me to pick a favorite. Don't ask me to pick a winner. But, you know, I'll be glued to the set on Sunday just as you will. Yeah. I, and, and again, I can't shake the feeling, to be quite honest with you, Mike, that for the first time in a, in a dog's age, uh, the person that wins the race uh, may not be one of the playoff championship four and that it may be the race within the race because i look after this year i've come to expect somebody may come down out of the grandstands and be a relief driver i don't know what to expect but phoenix is the end of a season that has had its ups and its downs overall what would you give the grade to nascar for 2022 i i think for the quality of competition and for the racing that this new car has produced. And let's remember, there was a lot about this new car that was completely untested in an oval track environment. Uh, Five-speed sequential gearbox, independent rear suspension, 18-inch wheels with with rubber band tires (laughs) without inner liners. Um, The whole crumple and crush zones of the car don't get high marks. the air wrenches and the signal single lug nut don't get high marks, but everything else, uh, considering everything that had to come together in a very short period of time, um, I don't think you could tell that it was all brand new, you know, because the car raced so well. Now, it raced very well on mile and a half. Uh, it solved a problem there. It, up until Martinsville uh, Sunday, really did not shine on the short tracks. There's work to be done there. And, uh, you know, NASCAR is looking at that. So I I would give NASCAR very high marks for the implementation of the new car. Uh, I think one thing that they have learned through this uh, and through the development of the modifications of the car for next year, uh, mainly in the areas of driver safety and increasing that crumple zone in the rear, that their communication needs to be better uh, with the drivers and with the teams who accuse NASCAR of doing nothing when in fact they've been working really hard at the R&D center. They just weren't ready to talk about it. And, you know, in absence of communication, you assume since there's no communication, there's no progress. That wasn't the case. So it, it's been a good learning experience. And, and I'm really happy uh, the way that this car has raced and how durable it's been. Mike, I appreciate your visiting with us. I would say enjoy your off time, but the countdown has begun. You know, this time next week, Larry Mack will be calling you up and saying it's X number of days to the Daytona 500. And on top of that, we all get to go to Cali one more time at the Coliseum. Looking forward to it. And as always, I appreciate your, uh, you know, inserting your opinions and sharing them with uh, my listeners here on wind tunnel. Uh, It's going to be fun. Thanks, Jack. Appreciate it.